couple people commented on the last video saying, if you're such a hoarder, how come your kitchen looks so neat and tidy? First of all, you're just seeing one frame. You don't see that there are a bunch of boxes and a suitcase to my left. People normally store suitcases in their kitchen, right? Secondly, I am most disciplined in my kitchen because I want to be able to prepare food and bake. Making it a habit to clear and clean my kitchen sink before bed each night has been so helpful to me. I've said before though how I feel like pig pen from peanuts, only instead of a cloud of dirt and dust following me wherever I go, it's clutter. And just like pig pen could never stay clean, I'll clear my kitchen counters of most of the clutter, but it doesn't seem to last for long. Pig pen was a dust magnet, I'm a clutter magnet. Before recording these videos, I take some time to clear most of the clutter off of the counters. So thank you to all of you for giving me motivation to keep up with that maintenance. People will tell me they don't think I have a real issue with hoarding because I don't have stuff stacked to the ceiling like the cases shown on TV. For one thing, TV shows go for extreme cases for sensationalism to attract eyeballs. Secondly, even though I've gotten significantly better about not acquiring a lot of stuff, I have incredible difficulty getting rid of things. To someone who doesn't have hoarding issues, the stuff that has made it across the threshold of my house may not look like a huge problem to get rid of. They'd say, you could get your house in order in a couple weeks. But with my hoarding issues, discarding is a real challenge because I see potential in so many things, or I feel bad wasting things that could still be used, or I hate the thought of dumping so much in a landfill, or I think someone else could use the item, or I can't let go of memories. It isn't just the number of possessions that contribute to hoarding issues. My clutter and my difficulty discarding things prevent me from living my life comfortably. Here are a couple of examples of things I've saved. These pencils are 20 to 30 years old and I still use them. This one, after the last sharpening, is really too short for me to use comfortably. Most people would not only throw it away now, they would have thrown it away years ago. But you know what thought popped into my head? Well, a small child with a tiny hand could use it. Yeah, I just need to get this to a three-year-old. I'll point out something else that some of you may be able to relate to. It's kind of hard to see the eraser because it's also black, but the eraser is pretty much unused. You know why? Because whenever I use the pencil, I didn't want to use up the eraser prematurely. It bothers me when a pencil runs out of eraser like these did. Because what if I only have this pencil on hand and I need to erase something? So to prevent that calamity from ever happening, I wouldn't use this eraser on the pencil. I would use one of these, which are also probably 20 to 30 years old. I did throw one pink eraser away because it was less than an inch in size, but these larger ones are a challenge for me to discard. I bought this eraser because I thought it was so cute, but I've never used it because I didn't want to ruin it. I'm afraid to make a mistake using something that pokes fun of making mistakes and is designed to correct mistakes. I have no shortage of new pencils. These are three-sided, kind of a soft triangle shape, which I found interesting and unique. Each pencil in the pack has a different Chinese saying on it, so they're also individually unique. And because of that, I wanted to keep the entire set pristine. Here's the thing. I can't read Chinese. When I bought them in Taiwan, my dad was still with us and he helped me translate them. I wrote down the sayings in one of my many notebooks, so they're somewhere, but the fact that I know each saying is different makes me want to keep all the pencils intact. In whittling down my paper clutter, I've emptied out a number of file folders, but these folder tabs, I have a hard time getting rid of them because if I need to label a new folder, I could still use these by writing on the blank side. And if I were to discard these, I would have a hard time throwing even this itty bitty piece of paper in the regular trash because paper can be recycled. Here's something else embarrassing, itty bitty soap bits. My dad who had hoarding issues, we found the same thing in his apartment when we cleaned it out. I didn't learn that from my dad. I wasn't living with him at the time he was saving soap bits. 
I started doing it myself. Still think I don't have hoarding issues just because my kitchen looks tidy. It's hard for me to share some of these things because I know it's not normal. But this is the truth, folks, and I think it's critical that people start talking about this more so that understanding increases, stigma decreases, and treatment methods improve. Not talking about these issues, hiding these issues, doesn't help people with the issue. People struggling with hoarding need help. They need information, they need resources. The way society pushes consumerism, I'm convinced that this condition is increasing at a rate people don't realize. Hoarding is kept a secret for as long as possible because of the shame people feel over it. We can't afford to wait until it's gotten so serious that forced intervention and cleanouts are required. Forced cleanouts are ineffective because they treat the smoke, not the fire. They usually backfire by traumatizing the individual and the individual just fills their home up again. But when things get to a level where the individual's safety is at risk, forced cleanouts seem like the only option, right? So what, what is the answer? Increase conversation and knowledge about hoarding so that it can be understood better, identified sooner, and more effective treatment can be offered. People think I'm overreacting by saying I have a problem with hoarding, but the extreme cases on TV, they didn't reach that level overnight. At some point in the past, their house was at a level similar to mine. That's how it works. This condition is progressive. And I know that if I don't do something about the way I think and behave, I could potentially end up in a situation like the ones they show on TV. Because the way the brain works, the more a person does something, the more ingrained it becomes and the more difficult it is to change. So the longer a person with hoarding issues goes without addressing their thoughts and behaviors, the more difficult it's going to be to turn their situation around. We can't wait until things are at a critical level to begin treatment. As John F. Kennedy said, the time to repair the roof is when the sun is shining. Working on changing my hoarding thoughts and behaviors has essentially become my full-time job. And it's still challenging for me, but I'm not giving up. I'm throwing this little guy in the trash and I've sharpened one of these to start using and enjoying instead. Pencils don't work very well when they're unsharpened and kept in a box for years and years. 